No string to fly No tears to cry Even if I tried But still my soul Refuses to die mm -hmm. One touch will change my life Good morning, friendship. It is indeed a blessing to be in the house of the Lord again, is it not? Let's give God a hand clap of praise because he's blessed us to be here one more time. Psalms 29 says this, verse 1 and 2 says, Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty, give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in beauty of holiness. Are you here to worship him today? Are you here to worship him today? Can you praise him just because of who he is and not because of what he's done? We now turn the hands of this devotional time over to our deacons and to those of you that have tuned in via the internet. We welcome you into this special worship experience. Amen? Amen. Good morning, friendship. Good morning. It is a blessed morning to be here. Scripture today is going to come from the book of James. James 1, starting at verse 2, and it reads, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have a perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that Wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double man in mind is unstable in all his ways. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. I've read to you James verses 1, verses 2 through 8 and 12. May God have a blessing on a reader the hearer and doer of his holy word. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Father, we thank you for this Sunday morning, Lord. We thank you for touching us and allowing us yet another opportunity to do your will. We thank you for each of us that are here this morning. And Master, there are some that are yet on their way. We ask that you bless them right now. Master, we ask that you allow us to cleanse to your unchanging hands. Yes. Keep us, Lord. Master, we love you and we praise you. And it is in the mighty, mighty, mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Come on, stand on your feet this morning. Come on and give God a big hand clap of praise. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on and lift the Lord up in this place because you know he's worthy. Make some noise. Come on, y'all. Come on, wake up in here. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord
pray. You know what? We traveled last week, and I just thank God for getting us there safely and back safely. Amen? So many accidents, so many people getting killed up and down the dangerous highways, but I thank God for favor, and I thank God for his goodness. How many of y'all know that whatever you're going through, it's done? It's already done.
believe it's already done. Woo! Amen. Good morning, friendship. <laughs> Giving all honor to God, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Pastor Trotter, First Lady Sister Trotter, other ministers on the roster, these are your announcements for Sunday, July 13, 2014. Old Time Gospel Hour, Wednesday, 8 until 9 p.m. July 19th, Teachers in Training Workshop. Please contact Reverend Autry Williams for details. Also on July 19th, Youth Community Service Outreach at Frisco Family Services. July 20th through the 25th, Youth 95th Ursha Convention in Indianapolis, Indiana. Please keep those who will be attending in prayer. July 21st, through the 25th, Vacation Bible School, 6.30 until 9 p.m. nightly. Register online at www.fbc-tc.org. No children or youth choir rehearsal for the month of July. No junior deacon meetings this month. Next Sunday, School teachers meeting will be August 2nd, room 1301, 9 a.m. August 3rd through the 7th, youth retreat at Camp Copus. Registration is closed. There will be a parent meeting July 15th at 7 p.m. in the Palm Court for youth participants. This meeting is mandatory. August 16th, Health Fair Blood Drive and Back to School Youth Rally, 9 until 2 p.m. The Friendship Baptist Church of the Colony Men Empowering Boys Mentoring Program is accepting applications for mentees for the 2014-2015 school year. Please stop by the tables in the foyer for details. Donations are being accepted for Annual Back to School Drive. Stop by the tables in the Family Life Center for information. Your support is needed. Attention students, community service hours are available for upcoming 2014 through 2015 school year. Please contact the youth department. Sign up today. Church announcements can be found in your bulletin, the church bulletin board, or you may log on to www.friendshipbaptistofthecolony.org. Please govern yourselves accordingly, Pastor Gregory Trotter and the body of Friendship Baptist Church of the Colony. And now, a quote from our pastor. Devoting a little of yourself to everything means committing a great deal of yourself to nothing. Thank you, and have a blessed week.
I told them y'all gonna sing like it's a thousand of y'all up here today. Hey man, didn't they do it? Come on, lift them up. Look at somebody and say, you don't know my story. Look at somebody and tell them, you don't know my story. You don't know what I've been through. I don't look like what I've been through. How many of y'all believe that? I don't look like what I've been through. You don't know. You don't know my story. Uh, you don't know my. You don't know the things that I've done. You cannot imagine. You cannot imagine. Pain the trial. The pain of trials I can't. Think about it. You don't know. No. You don't know my story. You would fall out if you knew my story.
to God, to Pastor Trotter, to all the ministers who labor with him, to our First Lady, Sister Trotter, and to the members of Friendship Baptist Church. I'm here to welcome our guest. If you're a guest visiting with us this morning, would you please stand and remain standing? <laughs> On behalf of Pastor Trotter and the hospitality ministry, we would like to say welcome. We're so pleased that you are here worshiping with us this morning. If there's anything that we can do to assist you while you are here, please do not as hesitate to ask any member of Friendship Baptist Church. If you're looking for a church home, we would love for you to, be a come up, to become a member of our family. With a Friendship family, please stand and welcome our guests. Thank you and have a great day. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm Brother Dr. Philip Masterson, and I'm here on behalf of the Health and Wellness Ministry to bring you another medical moment. This morning, I'm going to talk just a moment about strokes. One thing that I would like all of you, all of you to understand this morning is the fact that a stroke is a medical emergency that requires rapid diagnosis and treatment by a physician. The ideal treatment for an individual with stroke symptoms must occur within a four and a half hour time frame from the time an individual's stroke symptoms begins. More about this critical time in a moment. Like a myocardial infarction or a heart attack, a stroke should be thought of as a brain attack. The term brain attack was actually coined back in the late 1990s. In order to help the general public understand how serious strokes are, with the hope that people would seek immediate medical care. Unfortunately, the term brain attack has never really caught on with the general public. Strokes are the leading, I'm sorry, strokes are the fourth leading cause of death, but the leading cause of long-term disability in the United States. 
Every year in the U.S., about 800,000 people suffer a new or recurrent stroke, and about 130,000 people die from strokes. There are many risk factors for a stroke. Some of these include having uncontrolled high blood pressure, high cholesterol, atrial fibrillation, diabetes, drug abuse, especially cocaine, smoking, and being African American are also risk factors. Most strokes, in fact, about 85 to 90% of all strokes occur when a blood clot suddenly blocks a critical artery in the brain, cutting off the blood supply. This is what we call in healthcare as an ischemic stroke. Symptoms of a stroke may occur suddenly or gradually. It may include a severe headache and vomiting, loss of vision in one eye or both eyes, slurred speech, and inability to walk or stand. Stroke symptoms may also cause severe weakness and paralysis in the arm or leg. Now, treatment for ischemic strokes is available with something called tissue plasminogen activator, or simply TPA. TPA is a powerful medication which, simply put, dissolves blood clots in the brain. However, patients must be sel carefully selected and administration of TPA must begin within a four and a half hour uh, of stroke symptoms. After four and a half hours, TPA can potentially make your symptoms much worse. Despite the risk, many stroke vi victims have benefited from the use of TPA, some of whom have had complete reversal of their stroke symptoms, including their paralysis while still in the emergency room. Last year, in 2013, the American Stroke Association launched a public stroke education campaign that uses the acronym FAST, F-A-S-T, to help teach the warning signs of stroke and the importance of calling 911. F, facial drooping. A, arm weakness or paralysis. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. So if you or someone you know appears to be experiencing stroke symptoms or a brain attack, remember to think fast. F, facial drooping. A, arm weakness or paralysis. S, slurred speech. And T, time to call 911. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Third John, second verse. God bless you. Amen. Good morning, friendship. Amen. We praise God for another opportunity to be in his house of worship one more time. Amen. We thank you, Dr. Masterson, for Amen, our medical moment this morning. Amen. Amen. We want to say to those of you who are visiting with us today, welcome to Friendship. We are so glad to have you. Please come back and worship with us again. We also want to welcome those who are joining us via the Internet by live streaming. We welcome you into this worship service as well. Amen. We thank God for our choir being back. Amen. We thank God for carrying them, keeping them, and then bringing them back safely. Amen. We thank God for Brother Kevin Davis being here today. Amen. I was quite surprised to walk in and see him sitting there. Amen. Amen. Don't do it too fast. Amen. There's only one of you. Amen. And, and we thank God for the one we have. Amen. So take care of yourself. Amen. Take care of yourself. Amen. Amen. Vacation Bible School, amen, will begin in just a few days. As a matter of fact, next Monday, amen, the, 20, the 20th or the 21st, rather, will be our Vacation Bible School. 
And if you have not already signed up, amen, please go by in the, amen, Family Life Center and sign up and register for Vacation Bible School. Amen. We want all of you to come out and share in this experience. Vacation Bible School is not just for children. Amen. We have classes for all ages. Amen. So please come out and be a part of our Vacation Bible School starting on Monday, the 21st of July. Amen. We are preparing for our health fair and back to school giveaway. Amen. Our back to school rally. It's amazing. Amen. It seems like children just gotten out, have just gotten out of school. And now all of a sudden we are preparing for them to go back to school. Amen. I know some of you are just as happy as you can be. Amen. Amen. But we're getting ready. Amen. For our back to school giveaway. Amen. So please go by. They have the list. Amen. On one of our tables out there of what the back to school supplies that our children need. Amen. We don't want you to just go buy something and bring it, and then nobody's able to use it. So we have a list of the things that our children are needing for going back to school. So if you would, please go by and get a list so that we can have for them what they need. Amen. We want to inform those of you, Sister Dorothy McBride. This is the sister of Pastor C. Paul McBride. Passed away, I believe, on this past Tuesday. Amen. She was at one time a member of Friendship. Amen. She will be funeralized on this coming Tuesday at 10 a.m. at Laurel Land, at Laurel Land Funeral Home. They will be having a visitation on tomorrow evening, I believe, from 6 to 8. Amen. So this is for Sister Dorothy McBride, the sister of our beloved pastor, Dr. C. Paul McBride. Amen. We also will be having, amen, our teachers in training this coming Saturday. If you are a teacher or if you desire to be a teacher, amen, please avail yourself to this training that will be taking place this coming Saturday morning. I believe the time is 9 a.m. Amen. Amen. Don't forget that this coming Tuesday, amen, there's a mandatory meeting for those of you who have signed up your children to go to Camp Copus in August. They will be having a mandatory meeting this Tuesday at 7 p.m. Today we are honoring our cooks here at Friendship. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> this is annual Cooks Day here at Friendship. And we just take a moment out to recognize those individuals, amen, who are part of the Cook's ministry. And they are here as much as we are because of all of the different things that we have going on that we need their assistance in. So we thank God today for annual Cook's Day. I want all of those of the Cook's ministry to please stand. Amen. I know we have some in our choir stand. Amen. Amen. Well, I guess they're all in the choir stand. Amen. Sister Renee Gillespie. Amen. She is the servant leader for our cook ministry. Amen. So we thank God for them today. Amen. They're going to cook for all of us today in honor of themselves. No, we are going to do something special for them today. Amen. All right. We do thank God for our cook's ministry. How many of you have a story? Amen. I, I, I sat there as, as Candace was singing, and, you know, it's amazing what God has done in our lives. Amen. And, and people look at us and, and they think we've been like this all of our lives. But, but boy, you just don't know my story. You, you don't know where God has brought me from. Amen. You don't know the mountains and the hills that I've had to climb. Amen. To get to where I am today. And that's the reason why the first song they said, they sang, sang that said, let everything that has breath 
Praise the Lord. You see, now I have breath, so therefore I ought to praise the Lord. But let me tell you the other reason why I praise him is because you don't know my story. Amen. You don't know where God has brought me from. You don't know what he's done in my life. Amen. So when you see me praising him, don't judge me. You don't know my story. Amen. Amen. Somebody said it like this. I don't look like what I've been through. Amen. But I thank God that I have a testimony that I can tell somebody about the goodness. Amen. Of almighty God. Amen. Our deacons are going to come at this time to receive our tithes and our offering, our gifts, amen, back to God, amen, as we are obedient to him, amen. All right, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we just thank you, Father. Thank you for today. Thank you for allowing us to assemble in your name, Father. And as we receive this offering, Father, we just ask that you bless those that had it to give, those that had a desire to give that had it not, Father. We ask, Father, that you use this offering as a token to your church, Father, for the uplifting of your kingdom. It's in Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. Amen. Amen. Preaching of God's word. St. Mark chapter 10. And we'll read verses 17 through 22.
St. Mark chapter 10, beginning with verse 17, and it reads, And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come take up the cross and follow me. And he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved for he had great possessions. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day, another opportunity to come into your house of worship, to be able to lift up and praise your holy name, to worship you in spirit and in truth, which means we hold back nothing. We give ourselves wholeheartedly and completely to you. Now we ask that you would have your way in this preaching hour, may a word be spoken that will prick somebody's heart today. Have your way now as I pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. May God add a blessing to the reader, the hearers, and the doers of his holy word. We give glory, praise, and honor to the Father who is the head of my life, to Jesus Christ, his Son, who is my Savior, and to the Holy Spirit, my Comforter, to our ministers and deacons, and to all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, we greet you in the name of Jesus. Verse 21 says, Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing thou lackest. And that's what we are going to talk about this morning, the power of one thing. The power of one thing. This morning we have before us the story of one who came running to Jesus with an important question. Now we, along with Bible scholars, called him the rich young ruler. Now how did we get this title, the rich young ruler? Well, it's because the scriptures calls him a rich young ruler. Now, we get the title rich young ruler by reading all three of the synoptic gospels account of this record. Reading Matthew's account, Mark and Luke's account. You see, in Matthew 19 and 20, he's called a young man. In Luke 18 and 18, he's called a ruler. And then all three gospel accounts state that he had great possession, which tells us he was rich, thus giving him the title rich young ruler. Now this rich young ruler, we're told, came running to Jesus and he knelt down and ask Jesus the most important question that any individual will ever be able to ask. His question had to do with eternal life. 
Now, upon examination of this rich young ruler, we immediately see that he had three things. He had manners. Verse 17 tells us that because when he came to Jesus, he kneeled down. He also had morals. Verse 20 tells us that because after Jesus had quoted the commandment, the rich young ruler said, all these have I kept from my youth. And then he also had money. Verse 22 says he had great possessions. He had the three M's, morals, he had manners, and he had money, but yet he was lacking one thing. Amen. So let's look for a little while at this rich young ruler as he finds out that he's missing the one thing that he thought he already had. And listen, listen, not only did he think that he had already had it, but he felt that he had already earned it. So let's look at him for a moment. Amen. There are three errors that he made as he looked for eternal life. You see, first of all, he concluded Jesus to just be a good teacher. Look right there in verse 17. It's right there. And when he was gone forth, talking about Jesus, into the way, there came one running and kneeled down to him and asked him, good master. The word good master means good teacher. Amen. What shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Amen. Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? You see, how we view Jesus will determine how we respond to him. Amen. Who is Jesus to you? Because it determines how we respond to him. Amen. So he concluded Jesus just to be a good teacher. Amen. That's the reason why Jesus said to him in verse 18, why callest thou me good? Amen. Amen. There is none good but one, and that is God. Amen. Amen. You see, what Jesus understood was what this rich young ruler didn't understand. Amen. Jesus heard his words. But guess what Jesus did? Jesus looked into his heart. Amen. Amen. Because when Jesus said, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, and that is God. Amen. He, Jesus is saying, You are calling me God, but you really don't believe that I'm God. Amen. There's only one good. Amen. And that is God. You see, what we must understand is the words that come out of our mouth need to line up with what's in our heart. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we speak things, but those words are far from our hearts. Amen. We say to some Brother or sister, I love you. But it is far from what's in our heart. Amen, amen. Now, I can't see your heart, but God can. Amen, God knows our heart. Amen, that's the reason why Jesus said, why callest thou me good? There's not but one good, and that's God. And you don't believe that I'm God. Otherwise, you would not have called me a good teacher. Y'all missed that. Amen, amen. You're calling me a good teacher, but you are referring to me as God, but you really don't believe it. Amen. Jesus cut to the heart of the matter. Amen, amen. 
So Jesus said, why callest thou me good? So the first thing is he merely concluded Jesus to be a good teacher. And then secondly, he felt he, that he could earn salvation through good works. Amen. Look at it right there in verse number 17, the last part of it. He said, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Amen. Now notice, <clears throat> let me share this with you in verse 18. Amen. Jesus spoke to his heart before he answered his question. All right, y'all, we need to wake up this morning. We need to wake up this morning. Jesus spoke to his heart heart before he answered his question. Amen. You see, verse 19 is the answer to the question, but Jesus let him know, I see your heart. Amen. Look at what he said to him in verse 19. Now, now, now notice what Jesus said. Jesus said, thou knowest the commandment. Jesus didn't say, you've kept the commandment. He said, thou know it. Oh, y'all gonna miss this. Amen. Jesus said, you know the commandment. Amen. Now, now, he's the one that answered and said, I've done all of this from my youth. Jesus said, you know it. Now, Jesus didn't argue with him as to whether or not he had kept them. Jesus just simply told him, you know the commandment. Amen. 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 Y'all will get it when you go home. Amen. Amen. Verse 19, Jesus said, thou knowest the commandment. And Jesus said, do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. And then he said, defraud not. Now the, the word defraud not has to do with that portion of the Ten Commandment that tells us thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Amen. Thy neighbor's ox. Amen. That's what that word defraud is talking about. And then he said, honor thy father and thy mother. Amen. Amen. He thought that he could earn salvation. So he said, all of this stuff I've kept from my youth. He said, tell me what more I can add to my list of good things. Amen. My list of good works. Amen. Now, now let me ask you a question. Amen. Amen. Let me ask you a question. Amen. You're here today. But is your heart in it? Remember, God knows your, your heart. Is your heart in worship today? Amen. Let me, let me, let me tell you how you know when your heart is in worship when Jesus told that woman at the well that, that the time is coming when they shall not go to a place, but they shall worship me in spirit and in truth. Amen. That word spirit and truth means that we let go and we hold nothing back. Amen. Amen. Have you let go this morning? Are you holding Back on God. Amen. Remember, God knows your heart. Amen. Are you into worship this morning? Or are you wondering? Will he be through by 9.30 today? Amen. What's on your mind? Amen. Why worship is going on? Because whatever is on your mind, amen, te tells what's going on in your, your heart. Amen. Some of y'all have already gone to breakfast and you hadn't even left church yet. Remember, God knows your your heart. Amen. Amen. Have you ever said to somebody, Amen, where are you? You're physically here, but your mind is somewhere else. 
Amen. So this rich young ruler wanted to add something else to his good works. Amen. Amen. We need to understand that a list of works apart from the right intent of the heart becomes a list of works that will one day be burned up with fire. Amen. And it, it, it's sad to have been in church every Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And you took Saturday off. And when you stand before God, all of that stuff is burned up because it was for an outward show. And it was not from the heart. I tell you, God looks at the heart. God looks at the intent. You see, because sometimes we do things because we don't want folk to know that we are against what's going on. But what we don't understand is that blessings come not because of that, but because of our heart. Amen. You remember the story that Jesus told, amen, as he and the disciples were sitting there while they were watching around, amen, in the temple and putting money in and, and all of those religious leaders and, and, and everybody was running around putting in all of that big money, amen, trying to impress one another, amen, amen. But here comes a widow, amen, and she puts in Two mites. Amen. A very small amount compared to everybody else that had been putting in. But look at what Jesus said to her. Jesus said about her that she's put in more than everybody else. Do you know the reason why? Because she gave all she had. Now, now, now my question to you this morning in worship, have you given all that you have, amen. Or have you just given God some and saving the rest for whatever? <laughs> amen, amen. We must understand that God looks at our heart, amen, because Proverbs tells us that out of the heart flows the issues of life, amen, amen. Who you are, what you are, and what you are about, it comes from the heart. Amen. So he wanted something else to add to his list. But let me tell you what else he also thought. He also thought that he had already earned salvation through the good works that he had already done. Because look at what Jesus did. When Jesus started naming off the commandments in verse 19. In verse 20 he said, Master, still calling Jesus, good teacher. Because first of all, he has not realized that Jesus has seen directly into his heart. Amen. Jesus heard the words, but Jesus has also looked into his heart. And let me tell you something. When we pray... And you know, we try to impress God with words. Amen. Amen. Most holy and heavenly Father. The creator. God already knows who he is. Amen. We are trying to impress him. Amen. When Amen. We need to get to the matter because we're trying to butter God up. Amen. Thinking he's going to get chill bumps and oh, they know how to talk to me. But it's not a prayer from the lips that gets God's attention, but it's a prayer that's prayed from the heart. Amen. That brings about a response from God Almighty. Amen. You remember Eli when, when, when Samuel's mother was in the temple praying. Amen. He was watching her lips as her lips were moving. Amen. But all he could see was moving lips. 
and he assumed that she was drunk and he confronted her and she said to him, my Lord, I'm not drunk. But notice what she said, I'm pouring out my heart to God. And let me tell you what happened. Because she poured out her heart to God, guess what God answered? Her prayer. And a barren woman began to bring forth children. I tell you, God will answer a prayer that's prayed from the heart. You see, I think about our foreparents. Amen. Who didn't know all these fancy words that you and I know. But one thing they did know, and that is how to get a prayer through. Amen. How to call on God Almighty. And they got more with broken English than we're able to get with all of our fancy and flowery words. Amen. That won't cost you nothing. So he thought he had already earned salvation. He said to Jesus in verse 20, all of these things have I observed from my youth. Jesus in verse 21 looked at him and loved him. Think about it. Jesus knew that this young man had missed the boat and he was about to miss the boat because he was speaking from his lips rather than from his heart. But Jesus looked at him, beholding him, loved him, means that Jesus had compassion on him. Because Jesus knew that he was going to miss salvation because of just one thing. Jesus didn't tell him a whole lot of things he needed to do. Jesus said one thing, thou lackest. Now now, now, now look at that. He said, what must I do to inherit eternal life in verse 17? Jesus names off some things. He said, I have kept all of this. Jesus said, but there's still one thing missing. He said, go sell whatsoever thou hast. That was it. Go sell whatsoever you have and give to the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And Jesus said, and come and take up the cross and follow me. One thing you lack. One thing that's standing between you and eternal life. It's not adultery. It's not murder. It's it's not defrauding your neighbor. It's not bearing false witness. It's not honoring your father and your mother. He said there's just one thing. And the one thing is not what you've done. They're standing between you and eternal life. But the one thing is what you have. Y'all missed that again. Amen. Make sure you all get the tape when you get home. Amen. So that you all can catch this. It's, it, it's not what you've done that's causing you to miss out on eternal life. But it's what you have. What one thing. What one thing. What one thing. What one thing. that you have that's keeping God from answering your prayer. You see, you see, we have eternal life. Amen, amen. But we want to go higher 
in God. How many of you have some unanswered prayers? Yeah, I know. You're not going to raise your hand. How many of you have some unanswered prayer? What one thing has God spoken to you that you're still holding on to? One thing. It don't take a whole lot of things to hinder answered prayer. All it takes is just one thing. That one thing that God said let go of, but you're still holding on to. Amen. That's all right. Let it be quiet. Let it be quiet. I'm trying to help somebody. Amen. What one thing are you still holding on to? Who have you not for forgiven? What has God said he need you to do that you still hadn't done yet? You're praying and you're saying, Lord, Lord, please answer my prayer. And every time you say that, the Lord say the same thing. One thing. You see, we don't understand the power of one thing. You see, that one thing, if I had to continue to, to, to assume concerning this young man, it kept him out of heaven. He asked the question, what do I need to do? And let me tell you something. God requires us to give up the thing we want to hold on to the most. But what we don't understand is what we are holding on to is that one thing, power of one thing, that's keeping us from getting to where God has called us to. The children of Israel let one thing keep them out of the promised land. They had seen God part the Red Sea. Walk with me now. They had seen him deliver them from Egyptian bondage. They had seen how God had taken care of them as they were in the wilderness. He provided food for them. Provided water for them. But when he told them to go in and possess the land, they went over and found everything that God said was there. But it was one thing that kept them out of the promised land that were giants in the land. Not a whole lot of things, just one thing. When they came back and they gave the report to Moses and to the people, they didn't talk about a whole lot of stuff in the land. They said there's one thing over there that we cannot overcome, and it's called giants. The power of one thing. What am I trying to say to you? That one thing that God is saying, let go of. You are saying, but it's a giant. I, I can't turn loose of it, Lord. I can't let go. God said, giants are nothing to me. Do you realize you are talking to the most high God? That's my lemma talk sermon. I can't preach that now. Amen. Okay, okay. I'm not going to go to 11 o'clock. I'm going to stay with 8 o'clock. What one thing 
You're standing between you and your blessing. That what you, and let me tell you something. God has said it's yours. It's already yours, but, but. Okay. It's not the things that we've already done that God want to talk to us about. But it's that thing that we're refusing to let go of that God wants to talk to us about. Let me share this with you and then I'll take my seat. When you read further than verse 22, Jesus had a conversation with his disciples because when they saw this rich man and they saw that he was missing out on eternal life, their thoughts were, then who could be saved? And Jesus said to them that it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Notice what he said. He said it's easier. He didn't say it was impossible. Y'all just missing all of this this morning. He said it's easier. He did not say it's impossible. Because with God, That one thing that you're still holding on to, God knows that it's not easy for you to let go. But guess what he's saying to you this morning? Guess what he's saying to me this morning? Guess what he's saying to us? It's not impossible. Someone once said that the way, to, the best way to break a habit is to just drop it. That's so all you have to do is just drop it. Open your hands and let it go. It will break and you'll find God doing that thing that you've been waiting on him. To do. Somebody this morning, come on, Deacon. Somebody this morning need to let go of the one thing. Not a whole lot of things, just one thing. Because as we've seen from our lesson today, it was only one thing that kept this rich young ruler out of the kingdom of heaven. And only one thing will keep us from having what God said belongs to us. Somebody needs to let go of one thing so that God can move you to the next level that he's called you to. While the choir sings, our deacons and our ministers are standing. We're here to receive you this morning. First of all, we want to receive someone who don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sin. The story didn't end there in St. Mark chapter 10 because this same Jesus that talked to this young man about eternal life, he paid the price so that you and I could have eternal life as well. He hung, bled, and he died on Calvary's cross for your sins and for mine. Was buried, stayed in that grave for three days, and on that third day he rose with all power, both in heaven and in earth, in his hand. So if you're here and you don't know Jesus, 
we invite you to come. A candidate for baptism, we invite you to come. If you're here without a church home, we invite you to come. Friendship is a mighty good place to place your membership. But if you're here and you need someone to pray with you, that you can let go of the one thing that God has been speaking to your heart about, we invite you to come as well. While they sing, we extend an invitation to you to come. Will you come? Thank you for joining us by live streaming for our worship service today. We are now in the process of extending an invitation in our sanctuary, but I want to also extend an invitation to you, our viewers, if you don't know Jesus Christ in the pardon of your sins, that you might get to know him today. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, that if thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thy shall be saved. So if you are a non-believer and you would like to confess Jesus Christ, if you want to become a Christian today, all you have to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. And it's just that simple. You are saved. Also, if you're interested in having us to pray for you, you can visit our website. There's a place there for you to submit a prayer request, 
or if you're interested in becoming a member of the Friendship Baptist Church in the colony, you can also visit our website and there is a place there for you to make that request also. But most of all, thank you for joining us today via live streaming as we worship our God in spirit and in truth. May God bless you and keep you and may you have a blessed week.